All right. Well, listen, first of all, good evening, good evening, good evening. And we want to say hello to everybody who's uh, joining us on Facebook Live. Thank you for tuning in. This is Wednesday night Bible study at New Galilee Baptist Church, 414 Cedar Avenue in Belvedere, Delaware. I was very pleased to get a, an advance notice from Viola Parka. Hello. How are you? She has uh, sent a picture of her sitting in front of her computer with her iPad, ready to join us. <laughs> and so that's a good thing. Hello, Michael Dorn. Let's pray. Father, we thank you now for this time to come and share your word. Thank you, God, for an opportunity to teach your word. Now, God, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my Redeemer, and God's people said amen. amen. All right, good to be in the house of the Lord. Tonight's lesson is part two of our um, series on arrested development. And uh, tonight's lesson is titled, Growing Up Takes More Than Showing Up. Amen. There's a handout, you should have that as well. Uh, I've put some things on the screen for you to follow, and that'll make life a little bit easier on you. First John chapter 2 and verses 12 through 14 from the King James Version. First John chapter 2 verses 12 through 14. It's also on your handout. Hey Daniel, good to see you. I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. We'll talk about these uh, scriptures in just a moment. In part one of our series uh, last week, we looked at a portion of Hebrews 5 that has to do with spiritual maturity. There it is on the screen Hebrews 5, we looked at verses 11 through 14. Uh, we talked about um, the superiority of Christ, how Christ uh, was a better, uh, more superior, um, new and improved high priest, better than uh, the high priest that Israel was dealing with when Jesus came along. Uh, he eliminated the middleman and was able to be the propitiation for our sins, no longer had to go to the high priest to make atonement for our sins. That chapter also talks about spiritual maturity. We talked about um, going from spiritual baby food to adult food, how the Lord desires for us to be able to have an adult conversation about uh, spiritual maturity and being able to eat uh, solid adult food. But the writer of Hebrews said that I can't talk to you about some of this stuff because you're not mature enough to understand it. Uh, we ought to be going on a regular basis from spiritual baby food to adult food. Tonight, we continue our discussion on spiritual growth uh, by revisiting a lesson I taught some years ago. Uh, growing up is more than showing up. Some people think that growing up and showing up are the same. We think that if a person comes to church on Sunday, uh, attend Bible study, uh, holds uh, some office in the church, uh, whatever the case is, that he or she must be a mature Christian. Well, uh, that's not correct. I want you to know that some of the most immature people that I have ever known on the planet um, have never missed a Sunday. They, they've come to church, they hold offices, they teach lessons, they do all of these things but they are still in, spiritually immature. In fact, I would submit, ladies and gentlemen, that the biggest problem that the church has today, overall, the church as a whole, is spiritual immaturity. And the second greatest problem in the church is 
having spiritually immature people in places of leadership. Uh, that's kind of like the blind leading the blind. And what happens when a blind man tries to help another blind man across the interstate? They both get run over. <laughs> uh, hey, Reverend Thomas, good to see you. Pam Church, Tammy Lewis, Vashti Baker, everybody. Thank you for coming in. Good to see you. God wants you to grow up. Tell your neighbor, God wants you to grow up. Your Heavenly Father's goal, ladies and gentlemen, is for us to be more like Jesus every day. The sad truth is that there are millions of Christians who grow older, but they never grow up. They grow older, but they never grow up. And over and over in God's Word, we're told uh, that God wants us to be mature. Let me assign some scriptures tonight. Uh, we can take a look at some of those, and then we're going to come back to our first John text. Um, read these out loud if you get one of these so everybody can hear you, especially those who are watching us on social media. Here come the scriptures, Ephesians 4. Reverend Dorman, would you find Ephesians 4 and verse number 15? Um, 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 Brother Cliff, would you find Hebrews 6? And verse number one. Hey, Reverend Brown, good to see you. Good. Lady Evangelist Wilma, would you find 1 Peter 2 and verse 2? And then uh, Trustee uh, Cooper, uh, you don't have your Bible with you? All right. Find 2 Peter 3 and verse 18. Those are on the screen. In case you didn't get them all, you can write them down and put them in your notes. Ephesians 4 and 15. Hebrews 6 and 1, 1 Peter 2 and 2, 2 Peter 3 and 18. I said that so those of you in uh, Facebook Live can turn in your Bibles, write it down. Incidentally, I said this last week, those of you who would like one, we send these out in advance. This is the outline that I teach from. And if you would like one of those in advance, all you need to do is to inbox me with your screen name, uh, your Facebook name, or your email address, or your instant messenger address, and I will send it to you in advance as a PDF, and you can follow us along as we teach the lesson. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, Hebrews 6, verse 1, 1 Peter 2, verse 2, 2 Peter 3, verse 18. All right, what's that Ephesians 4 and 15 say? Uh-huh. Yeah, the English Standard Version of that says that we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. We're to grow into him who is the head into Christ. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1 says what? Uh-huh. Uh Mm-hmm. So, that's all right. Read one more. And of faith in God. Instruction about cleansing right, the laying of the hands, the resurrection of the dead, and the eternal judgment. Mm-hmm. That first verse, Hebrews 6, from the New Living Translation, basically says, let's stop going over the basics of Christianity over and over and over again. Let's go instead and become mature Christians. How many of y'all remember the phonograph, the record, and the record would get a scratch on it and it get to a certain place and it would skip and it would play the whole thing over and over and over again. Uh, First Peter chapter 2 and verse 2 says what, Lady Wilmore? Yeah, yeah. What version was that you just read that from? King James Version. Okay, the English Standard Version. Some, somebody here, different people have different versions. The English Standard Version reads, 
uh, let, uh, like newborn infants, long for pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up to salvation. And then Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, Trustee Cooper, what does that say? You in Second Peter chapter three and verse eighteen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you almost, almost got here trying to cross the highway. That's all right. Second Peter chapter three, verse eighteen. For growth is grace. Yes. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There you go. Grow in grace and understanding of our Master and Savior Jesus Christ. That's how it reads in the Message Bible. Amen. He gets all the glory now and forever. So growth should be the what? The goal of every Christian. Growth should be the goal of every Christian. If you recall from last week what we learned about spiritual maturity. There it is. Spiritual maturity is achieved through becoming from Louis Demon. After salvation, every Christian <laughs> begins the process of spiritual growth with the intent to become spiritual mature. That's 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 the whole idea. Spiritual maturity is achieved through becoming more like Jesus. And then after salvation, every Christian begins that process, that slow process, with the intent of becoming more spiritually mature. Yes, ma'am. Um, there's a, um, even as you, as you say you need to be spiritually mature and continue to grow, can you touch on some points of how to be actively doing that all the time? Well, we can all talk about that. How do you grow and how do you go about becoming grown spiritually on a regular basis? One way is yes is um, Christian growth is directly related to obedience to the truth that we've already learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so it's related to being obedient to the truth you've already learned. You've already known some things, some practical ways even to go above and beyond that is to spend as much time as possible studying and reading the word of God. Every opportunity, you ought to do that. I used to think that the Bible was such a boring thing because every time I would try to read it at night, I'd go to sleep. <laughs> but then I discovered, the older I got, that every single problem I'll ever experience, the answer to that problem is in the Bible. The remedy is, ooh, that's a preach. The remedy is in the the book. It's in the book. Tell your neighbor, it's in the book. In the book. When a Christian stops growing, the Christian stops, starts backsliding. Now, backsliding is not really a term that's used in the Bible. When you talk about backsliding, it's really talking about Israel, but we kind of have taken that word, that term, and thrown it into the Christian vocabulary, but it means basically that you kind of slipping back into where you was. Remember that song that war had out years ago? Slipping in the darkness. I was, <laughs> you know, slipping in the darkness. Slipping in the darkness. And incidentally, by the way, in case you didn't know, that song actually has from very deep meaning. The guy who wrote that song, who was part of war, was a genius, a lyrical genius. He was really talking about slipping back into bad ways and bad habits. He really was talking about that. Slipping in the bar. War, yeah, war. Yeah. 
Different song, but the same era. They came out in the 70s. 1972, I was in college when that song came out. I was slipping in the darkness. My goodness, my goodness. 1972, Delaware State. Slipping in the darkness. Yes, yes, yes. So that's one way. Spending time reading the Bible. Standing time in prayer. That'll help you grow uh, uh, spiritually. And then the Bible also talks about in the New Testament that we ought not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as is the custom of some. Because the purpose of coming together is not just because, you know, the church wants to see your face in the place. No, it's not because the church wants some money from the offering. No, the purpose of us assembling is to encourage one another. We are to support one another. Uh, when we come to church, we ought to be able to kind of look out for each other spiritually. I ought to be able to look and see uh, Deacon as West say, oh, she's feeling kind of down today. Let me go over here and encourage her. I ought not be going around when I see somebody going through saying, mm, what's wrong with her? You know, <laughs> look at her, looking all stupid, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, in church, in church doing those things. <laughs> We and we wonder why people on the outside don't want to come in. Because they say, I can't tell the difference between them folk in there and those people out there. Support. Sister Tammy said, support. You got to support. Tell your neighbor, I support you. you. Got to support. You don't have to agree with everything. But when it comes to spiritual maturity, we are coming together in church, the body of Christ. God has the Bible says, fitly joined us together. She was getting ready to say that. <laughs> fitly joined us together. It That's means good. that God put us together as it pleased him. Mm -hmm. He didn't ask you nothing. He don't care whether you don't like her or not. He, I'm putting her in your life because there's a reason for her to be there. You may not like her. You may not appreciate her. But I put her there because something about her one day will encourage you. Or one day you will be called on to encourage her. So my advice is, y'all better try to find a way to get along because you really need each other. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You had a fan? You had somebody hand hand up? Yes, ma'am. So the reason why I asked that question because you, you said earlier that you know people that come to church year after year, yeah. every Sunday, yeah. Bible study, yeah. and serve, and don't grow. Don't grow. But how can you sit under the word of God even if, you're, even if you're not studying at home or whatever, how can you sit under the word of God? And not grow? And not grow. Because sometimes we come to church at a tradition. We come to church at a tradition. Well, on Sunday I got to go to church. That's what I'm going to do. But then you don't get nothing out of it. Or you come to church and you say, uh, that service was nothing. That wasn't for me. Yeah, well, you was here. God put you here. He let you be here. It was for you. Every time you come in here and the word of God is preached, there is, that is for you. That is for you. If you don't hear it, then something's wrong in your hearing. Your hearing has gotten dull. Your hearing has gotten dull. Your spiritual hearing aid needs the batteries replaced. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, ma'am. It doesn't happen automatically. It takes deliberate effort along with God's enabling. Absolutely. doesn't happen overnight. It takes a deliberate yeah, effort. Thing that you, what you bring in with you. Yeah, it has a lot to do with what you bring in with you. If you come in with no expectation, then you leave with no expectation, and you leave with nothing. Re well, reprobate in mind, a reprobate in mind means that you don't know what's right and what's wrong. God has, God has really basically said, that's one of the worst places to be, by the way, when God has basically said, you know what, I'm tired of fooling with you. I am tired of fooling with you, and I'm just going to turn you over to a reprobate mind. You running around Ain't thinking hope. you're doing the right thing, you don't even, huh? There's hope, but it's not a lot. Not a lot, not a lot. So if you are the same Christian today, that you were a year ago, you are not the Christian you ought to be. Something should have happened over the past year that caused you to grow just a little bit. 
you, I mean, you may never only grow on by the inch, you know. You didn't grow up to be overnight, you know, seven feet tall. You know, it took a little time. You know? And another thing is, you know, as you grow, you can take a little bit more than you took before. That's how you can tell that you've grown spiritually. You can start taking a little bit more. Yeah. You used to just flat out right on the bat, just <laughs> haul off and slap somebody, <laughs> cuss them right on out, and keep it moving. No, you don't do that now because you have grown in grace <laughs> and in wisdom. All right. Now, in this passage that we're looking at tonight, 1 John chapter 2 and verses 12 and 13, John informs us that there are three stages in the process of becoming what God intends us to be. They're described in verses 12 and part of verse number 13. Getting a little warm here? Yeah. All right, turn the air back on low, if you will. And so notice what it says. It's on the screen. You can turn in your Bible or you can read it from the King James Version. Uh, he says here, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. First group right there. I write unto you, verse 13, fathers, because ye have known him that you have known him that is from the beginning. Second group, I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. And next group, I write unto you, little children, because you have known the father. Three classes, three stages of growth. Little children, fathers, and young men. You all see that? Now, other scriptures confirm that uh, this threefold division, this threefold step toward becoming spiritually mature. Look at the highlighted. I've highlighted so you can see it better. I write unto you, little children, and then... I write unto you fathers, and then I write unto you young men, and then I write unto you little children. Whoops, back up. Not ready for you yet. Fly away. Fly away. So those are the three stages of spiritual growth, little children, young men, and fathers. Now these are also evident in three types of food that the scriptures mention as being available to Christians. Write this in your notes. Both Peter and Paul speak of milk, the milk of the word for babes in Christ. Because what? Milk is the proper food for babies. A baby comes home from the hospital, you don't be cooking no T-bone steak. <laughs> so here, baby. Baby can't do that. Now, of course, back in the old days, they don't do it no more. Yeah, back in the old days, mama would chew it up because the old poor folk, you know, like us, didn't have no food money for, for uh, uh, formula. You know, we got the milk right from the cow. Or if you didn't have no cow, you got the milk from mama. That was the best you could do right there. And then if sometimes mama would chew that stuff up, and then she, ew, ew, that's nasty. But then she gave it to you. You probably had some, Chris. I'm just telling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you probably, you probably had some. Huh? Well, it depends on where you are. If you live in the city, no. You all didn't have no cows on New London Road. But in the country, well, where are you close enough? Up the street. Up the street. You could throw a rock there. But I'm saying, and you didn't drink milk as a baby? No, not no newborn baby, no. How do you know? Because I drank corn. Oh, he didn't drink milk from no corn. Hold, wait, hold up, hold up, wait. I drank milk. I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't have formula. You probably had milk too. You probably didn't have, uh, formula, look, no, formula was expensive. That infamil and all that. Yeah, some of us, a lot of us, what did you say, Jimmy? A lot of us wouldn't be here. Milk, 
What's that, Rem Brown? Rem Brown said in a newborn baby had milk in the country. Down the way. The lady woman, you might have had some for him. How do you all know? How do you all know? Hold up, hold up here. Hold on. I want to hear what you said. But now, but wait, hold on, because the old, and I'm not saying I'm, that you didn't, but the old folks, the old saints' definition of formula it was, was milk watered else. down, yep. because straight milk was too rich. Let me just, let me, let me, Tammy, that's too much information. Tammy, <laughs> let me, let me just put this out here to our Facebook friends who are, our class is watching, because I'd like to get you guys involved. Uh, just go ahead and type, if you will, what you had as a baby. Did you have store-bought milk? Did you have milk from the cow? Did you have formula? Uh, I just want to, out of curiosity, see what some of you all had. Huh? Okay, well, we'll see. The, the results of the poll will be on in just a moment, and when we get the results, I will let you know. So, listen, there are three stages of spiritual food. There's P Paul and Peter talk about milk. Jesus, amen, is described in John as another type of food, Bread. Okay. First poll result came in. Okay. Sister Baker said milk. Ed Green says, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Don Thomas said, can a pet milk watered down? There you go. Yeah. She's a country girl. Country girl. So maybe you, you might have had formula, you know. So anyhow, so John describes our Lord himself as being bread. Stay with me, stay with me, don't get lost now. And then Peter, and then Paul rather, speaks of strong meat of the word. All right, Sister Tammy says milk, breast, and cereal was added to milk watered down. Okay, uh, Reverend Dorman just gave me a thing that said in the late 20s, Alfred Bosworth released Similac for similar to lactation and Mead Johnson released Sobe. Several other formulas were released over the next few decades, but commercial formulas did not begin to seriously compete with evaporated milk until the 50s, 1950s. Well, listen, one thing about it. Yeah, because one thing about it, you started out as a baby with some things, you're going to die the same way. You, you, look, you came here in a pamper. Before you die, you're going to leave in a pamper. That's just the way it is. That's just the way that is. Just get ready. Get used to that. All right. So in those, three, in those three stages, you have reference to these three stages of life. Now, also, also, watch this. Uh, in Romans 12, let's go to Romans 12. Yes. Yeah. Paul speaks of strong meat. Mm -hmm. That's the word of God. So again, the three types of food, milk for babes in Christ, bread, the bread of life, Jesus himself. And then Paul speaks of strong meat, the strong meat of the word. So now in Romans 12, Paul speaks of the Christian's experience of understanding. Uh, Romans 12, verse 3 and somebody read the B clause, Romans 12 and verse 3, the B clause. Who has that? But to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Yeah, Paul says, Paul says, think what? Soberly. soberly how? As God. As God. As given to every man. 
has given every man a measure of faith. Paul also says, ladies and gentlemen, we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice to God, holy and acceptable, which is our spiritual worship. And by this, we will come to know, he says, what is good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Now, to a baby, to an infant, spiritually, the will of God is something he or she cannot understand. Baby can understand that. Baby only knows one thing. When I'm hungry, I cry. When I'm wet, I cry. When I'm cranky, I cry. And if I do it long enough, I'll get somebody's attention. Somebody will come see about me. So it is even with the Christian faith. Amen. We cry unto the Lord. And because we know if we cry long enough, whoo, he's going to come see about us. All right. So, uh, so it is with the adult who is spiritually immature. They are limited in their ability to comprehend some things of God. When you are spiritually immature, you know, some things are hard for you to comprehend because you have not grown. Been in the church for 20 years and still don't understand the salvation plan. Think you can get into heaven on works. Doesn't work that way. Got to do something else. All right. Now, in this revisited lesson tonight, I want to share three ways that you can obtain spiritual maturity. Three points I want to give you tonight. Three ways you can obtain spiritual maturity. Going back to the baby, uh, Sister Tammy, you're just a wise person tonight. Sister Tammy says, you're not babies anymore. Amen. And... Uh, all right, not babies anymore. All right, here are some ways. Talking about growing up is more than showing up. First one, you must desire your spiritual maturity. Write that note to yourself. I must desire my spiritual maturity. Churches are filled with people who have not made a commitment to grow and they attend life, all of their spiritual life, all their spiritual life, they stay babies because they've never made a commitment to grow. Put this in your notes. This is the deep point right here. Here it comes. Ready? An active member is not necessarily the same as a mature member. An active member is not necessarily the same as a mature member. Watch the screen. Here's what we have too much of in the church. That's Peter Pan. <laughs> Peter Pan. I'll take him back because you missed him. We have the Peter Pan syndrome. Peter Pan. Who? Anybody who knows who Peter Pan is? No. Peter Pan was a wonderful Disney character. Looked just like that, by the way. Google Peter Pan. Peter Pan lived in a place called Never, 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 Neverland. Here's Peter Pan's problem. He even sang about it. Peter Pan refused to grow up. Refused to grow up. He even sang, he's never going to do it, never going to do it. <laughs> never going to grow up. We have people walking around with Peter Pan syndrome. How do you know a person has not grown up? I'll put it out there. How do you know a person has not grown up? By their action. By their action, by their attitude. Action, attitude, don't get their way. Mm -hmm. What do they do? Temper tantrum. Temper tantrum. <laughs> yeah, can't get their way. All right. Uh, just because, watch this, just because you're going does not mean you're growing. Just because you're going does not mean you're growing because the truth is, sisters and brothers, that spiritual maturity must be intentional. Tell your neighbor, it's got to be intentional. It requires commitment. It requires effort. It requires determination. It requires hard work. Lady Wilmore, you had it. Go back and get it again. First Peter 2 
and verse 2. Did you have that? Go get it for me again, please. First Peter 2 and verse number 2. All right, let's see. What are we saying on Facebook here? Mm-hmm. Sister Tammy, the wisdom lady tonight. <coughs> she says that when you have the Peter Pan syndrome, you don't want to grow, you put on temperature. She says your actions are that you quit. Can't take it, won't quit. That's what we should do when, when we didn't win the game. I quit. <laughs> take my toys and go home. All right. First Peter 2 and 2 says what? As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. In other words, you must crave spiritual milk mm -hmm. so you can grow. Now let me add an adjective to this spiritual milk business. You must crave pure spiritual milk. Mm -hmm. Don't be on that simulac that's watered down. That's the bad word right there. Watered down word. Watered down word. Watered down word. Trustee Cooper never did this. Trustee Hudson never did this. Back in their days of the club owner, they didn't water down the liquor. <laughs> <laughs> watered it down to make more money then people swore they was drunk watered down watered down word won't help you grow watered down word is like cotton candy preaching. It's fluffy, it tastes good, but it has no substance that will feed you. It'll just satisfy your sweet tooth. But if you eat too much of it, you get cavities. Got folk walking around with spiritual cavities because they eating all they want is cotton candy preaching, sugar coated word. Yeah, sermonettes. Sermonettes produce Christianettes. Who want to get out of church early so they can smoke some cigarettes. <laughs> I ain't going to mess with them, folk. I was one of them. Yes, sir, Jimmy. Yeah. 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 Some people get up and run down here. Mm hmm. <laughs> some cry. Mm -hmm. Some some do not make that think of. Mm hmm. And I'm here being able to preach it. Tell people about them sitting there like they're on, on a log or some, some kind of thing. Some sort of sitting there and I'm saying, I'm like, he don't know how I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, part of the, the part of that is because part of that is because people often equate salvation with emotion, and they don't have nothing to do with each other. You know, you may be the kind of person who is deeply convicted. And know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you leave here, you're going to heaven because you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But you may never fall out speaking in tongues. You may not never run around the church. There's some folk even in this church, and you, you're one of them. I would be shocked if some son of you busted up, jumped up, and <laughs> ran around the church speaking in tongues. Not to say it wouldn't happen, but I would think, wow. But here's what, I would, here's what I would think. Something about that particular word right there, whatever was said or done, triggered something. You know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Here's the way I've heard you say this before. 
Yeah. I'm waiting on it. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Those in old days, I'll, I'll take it to a term. We don't do it in the church these days, but it, back in the old days, and Reverend Dorman can take you back to, to the old church God in Christ storefront days, we used to have what's called Terry service. Now, the Terry service was for folk who had the same desire. I want it. I want it. I want them old church mothers. They were, some of them were so mean. They were so mean. You got your... You ain't gonna have it yet. Sit it back down. <laughs> Bring it to the front. Get you on your knees and say, "Okay." And here's what you do. Just start saying, "Jesus, Jesus, 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 Jesus." Jesus. And at some, some point, we jump up because we got tired of saying it. And they say, "No, sit down." And it was the truth. Somehow or another, those old saints, somehow or another, something about them, they they had a discernment. They say, "Oh, you know, you don't have it," because when you really got it. When something really happened, when that, as, as, as where the Church of God in Christ was born on Azusa Street, when that really happened, it surprised even you. You know, uh, you may never fall out, but that doesn't mean that if you don't, you don't, you're not saved. No, no, because I say this so many times, salvation is not rocket science. It's the ABC, accept, believe, and confess and ye shall be saved. It say nothing about falling out in the spirit. And we have, even in the church among believers, equated what preaching really is. We, some folk don't believe that he's preaching. If you don't listen, if you don't do that, oh, he ain't preaching. Not one where in scripture, not one place in scripture did I ever hear Jesus catch a tomb. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't nobody playing the tambourine. No, oh, preach me to preach. No, he sat them down <laughs> and taught them saying. No, they do. They do. <laughs> they do. Yeah. There's a whole. Without I don't want to get. I don't want to waste my. Spend a lot of time on. But there's a whole. There's a whole new genre today, where even, uh, even the shout. One person jump and shout, and about twenty, thirty young folk jump up there and they'd be doing it all together and then just boom, just like that you shut it off and that, uh, that. or when the music stops or uh, you know for the shout oh. <laughs> take them glasses off you know but in the old days they, you know they, they would just let you somebody would try to get them you know, and, but the Holy Spirit wouldn't let you fall and bust your head on nothing. You know, he didn't tear your stuff up, you know, but that's, that's a, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lady Bad, Lady Williams, good to see you. All right, so, so, um, growing up is more than showing up. So, uh, first point, my, I must desire my spiritual maturity. And the second point is, I must develop my spiritual maturity. And now, in order to leave childhood, you got to become an adult. And according to John, 1 John 2 and 14, the mark of a young adult is the ability to overcome the wicked one. Go back to 1 John chapter 2, and somebody read, let everybody read verse 14. 1 John chapter 2, and on the count of three, let's all read verse number 14. That's our 1 John chapter 2, and verse number 14. All right, everybody got it? Ready? One, two, three, read.
Yeah. Amen. Now the word abide means to live with. To live with. Amen. To live with. If you're going to grow as a Christian, catch this, you must live with the word of God. Let me give you something, put this in your note, I'll say it slow, because this is powerful. This is prolific. You must live in the word of God, then you must be able to live by the word of God. Woo! We don't have no problem living in the word. It's that living by the word stuff that gets us a little tripped up. Then you'll be able to live by the word of God. If you live in the word of God, then you'll be able to live by the word of God. Let me be very plain. Unless you get the word of God yourself on a consistent basis, you'll never grow to full spiritual maturity. It's just that simple. Those who want to grow, read the Bible. Those who don't want to grow, don't read it. <laughs> it's kind of like going to the doctor and the doctor said, listen, I'm going to give you this prescription. And you say, well, I don't, I don't like taking the pills. Okay, fine. Yeah. Then you just chose to be sick. I've had this conversation with Lady Wilmore before. And the doctor gave her, I don't like taking the medicine. Fine, then you chose to be sick. You've got two choices. Take the pill and get better. Don't take the pill, be sick. Hmm, let's see. Do I want to be better? Take the pill. Don't want to be better? Don't take the pill. Why? When you say I'm not going to take the pill, you made a decision. I'm going to be sick. I'm a diabetic. I know that I must take certain amounts of pills. Got to take this needle. Don't like it. And I have some days that I ain't taking it. I don't feel like sticking myself. I'm going to bed many a night. I ain't take, I'm not sticking myself tonight. You pay a high price. The next day I'll pay the price. Wake up just as dizzy and thirsty. <laughs> yeah, so if spiritual maturity is going to be a priority in your life, then Bible study has got to be priority in your life. You can't read the newspaper for one hour, watch the TV for three hours, read the Bible for three minutes, and expect to grow. Can't do it, can't do it. Can't do it. All right. Uh, oh, let's see. How much time I got here? Oh, we got 10 minutes. I got 10 more. Okay. All right. Did you realize, by the way, that if you read the Bible for just 15 minutes a day, that you'll completely read the Bible in one year? Every day, if you read a portion of the Bible for 15 minutes, you will read the whole Bible in one year. Now, you're kind of going to get slowed up a little bit when you get to the begats. Because, you know, just go on through them. <laughs> All right, if you cut but one 30-minute television program off a week and read the Bible, you'll be surprised how much you'll grow. Now, the networks are kind of helping some of us out soon. Preachers, they're taking some stuff off the air. The seasons are wrapping up, so maybe people will come, you know, Maybe I might move Bible study at a Tuesday night since half and half notches is built almost <laughs> gone. Veronica then got drowned. So, <laughs> yeah, so he, that's coming all going off soon. Maybe we'll have a, you know. Now, I heard a preacher say this one time that the devil is not afraid of a Bible with dust on it. <laughs> Just like a thug is not afraid of a gun. It had no bullets. <laughs> Devil's not afraid of you. If you know you got a gun and ain't got no bullets in it. Don't know how to use it. Ask your neighbor, is your gun loaded? All right. All right. Let's go here. Third point. Not only must I desire my spiritual maturity... And then secondly, I must develop my spiritual maturity. Thirdly and finally, I must demonstrate my spiritual ability. 
Now I want you to listen very carefully to this next statement because spiritual maturity is demonstrated more by how you behave than it is by what you believe. Let me say it again. Spiritual maturity is demonstrated more by how you behave than it is by what you believe. Because if you believe or say you believe, it doesn't matter if you don't believe like you believe what you believe. Woo! <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Jesus said, by this one act of love will people know that you are my disciples. Yeah. Let's find James chapter 3 in verse 13, please. James chapter 3 in verse 13. We're almost out. James chapter 3 and verse 13. If you don't have it, here it is on the screen. Who is a wise man, man, and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. In other words, the moment you open your mouth, we're going to tell how spiritually mature you are. Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> so what we believe determines our behavior. That's right. What you believe mm -hmm. determines your behavior. If you believe or say you believe, it doesn't matter if you don't believe like you believe what you believe. What? <laughs> Come on, Bruce. Got it. Act like you believe. Tell your neighbor, I believe what I believe. I believe what I believe. Sometimes we get the idea that if a person knows a lot about the Bible, he or she must be spiritually mature. The devil knows scripture. He quoted it back to Jesus a couple times. Yeah, yeah. I know a whole lot of folk who got a lot of head knowledge but have no spiritual maturity. Uh, finally, the real mark of maturity is obedience. Go to James chapter 1, verse 22, and then we'll be just about finished. James chapter 1, verse 22. James 1 and 22. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Read that again. The real, mark, the real mark of maturity is obedience. Absolutely. Absolutely. James 1 and 22. Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceive your own self. Let me give you this one thing for free, and then we can get out of here. Give you some things. Write this down. You can impress your friends <laughs> later on. I'll, I'll, I'll pretend like you said it and I didn't. <laughs> all right. The Bible is doctrine, first of all. And the Bible gives us doctrine so we can know what's right. That's the first part. Keep writing. It then gives us reproof so we can know what's not right. Let me know if I'm going too fast. I'll say it again. The Bible gives us doctrine so we can know what's right. And then it gives us reproof so we know what's not right. And then it gives us correction to tell us how to get right. And then it gives us... In <laughs> I'm going to say the whole thing again and put it all together. 
and then it gives us correction to tell us how to get right. You got that? I saw correction to tell us how to get right. Yeah, it gives us correction to tell us how to get right. And then it gives us instruction so we can know how to stay right. I'll read it all back to you. I'll read it all back. The Bible gives us doctrine so we can know what's right. Mm -hmm. It then gives us reproof so we can know what's not right. It then gives us correction to tell us how to get right. And then it gives us instruction so we can know how to stay right. That's the lesson for spiritual maturity tonight. Growing up is more than showing up. Anybody have a question? Remember our last point last week? You're either growing or shrinking. Which one are you doing? Anybody have any questions? All right. Listen, those of you who have been watching me on Facebook Live tonight, and watching on our um, uh, Bible study live. Thank you for watching us. This coming Friday night at 7 o'clock here at New Galilee Baptist Church, 414 Cedar Avenue, Belvedere, Delaware. The zip code is 19804. We present once again those singing ladies, five of Wilmington's finest and most gifted and anointed lady songbirds will be here in concerts at the free will offering. That is this Friday night at 7 o'clock. This Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock is our 100 Men in Black. Reverend Douglas Miller from um, St. Luke UAME Church in Westchester, Pennsylvania will be here at 3 p.m. That's this Sunday afternoon, our 100 Men in Black program on Saturday, June the 29th. That's the initial sermon of Minister Cheryl Moore at 5 o'clock. That's a Saturday. Come and be here. I know she'll appreciate it. And then on Sunday, that Sunday the 30th, is the New Galilee Baptist Church Choir's 80th anniversary under the direction of Apostle Dale L. Stoudemire. That's going to be a great, great program. The Lumsey family from Wilmington, Delaware is our featured guest along with uh, the gifted and talented Pierce Oates. So come and be with us at New Galilee Baptist Church. Don't forget to donate to our campaign. Uh, you can click on the Give button, the Donate button on the bottom of the page. Go to our website, www.firehouse414.com. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we've had together today. Give us traveling mercy as we leave this place, but never leaving your presence. Thank you, God, for what you have done and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all. See you on Sunday morning. I love you. Nothing you can do about it. Bye-bye.